All right, so this is the moment that a lot of you have been waiting for. A video that's actually on the short side, maybe. That's the plan, starting there. So we want to talk a little bit about nomenclature, and the good news is the new nomenclature that we're adding today is actually going to be pretty small. Um, even where it says common names, a lot of those common names are going to be completely optional. There are two, only two, where the name, and I don't even want to use the phrase common name, but the name that we are going to call it, that's going to be something that we have to pay attention to. So the recap, because I know some of us are having a hard time juggling basically three different kinds of nomenclature. When do I do prefixes? When do I do Roman numerals? When do I do neither? So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of hang our uh, our time on to uh, a few points here. Number one is all previous nomenclature stays the same. So as we do new nomenclature, it doesn't change any of the old stuff. So the very first thing we did in nomenclature was diatomic elements. Those will be diatomic elements to the end of time. Simple metal non-metal nomenclature will be done in that way until the end of time. Um, all we're ever going to do is add new compounds to our, the list of things that we can actually do nomenclature for. Um, and I want to highlight this point because I've been making this comment quite a few times is that those special metals that don't take a Roman numeral will never take a Roman numeral. And the Roman numeral is going to be the charge on the metal. It's not a counting tool. It's nothing other than the charge on the metal. And then the prefix is um, making sure that we, we have those and we're not getting those mixed up. Okay. And then in terms of recap, uh, I'm going to give you a flow chart. And we haven't really used the term binary compound yet, but a binary compound just means a compound with two kinds of atoms. So one metal, one nonmetal, or one nonmetal and a different nonmetal. So if you take a look at that compound, the first thing you should be doing is having to look at what the first element is. Is that first element a metal? There are two options. It can either be yes, it's a metal, or no, it's not a metal. If it's a metal, then we have to ask one more question. Is that metal one of those special metals? Group 1, group 2, group 13, or one of those other five scattered throughout the sort of middle section of the periodic table? The answer to that is either going to be yes or no. If the answer is yes, it is one of those metals, then we go back to week 1 where all we have to do is name it. No Roman numeral. Uh, total positive charge has to equal total negative charge, and the nonmetal is going to end in IDE. And I realize I'm, I'm mixing in both the names and the formula rules, but those are the things that we had to keep track of. If going back to that previous question, is the metal from one of those special groups, if that answer is no, it's definitely a metal, but not one of the special metals, then we have to start looking at Roman numerals, where the Roman numeral is the charge on the metal, and that's all it is. That Roman numeral does not necessarily need to show up anywhere in the formula. It doesn't need to quote unquote make any sense, right? If tin 4 oxide, if you were to look at the formula for tin 4 oxide, the 4 doesn't stand out in the formula at all. Like why is it there? It's because the charge on that atom of tin is 4. But because it's an ionic compound using metals and nonmetals, then the total positive charge will equal the total negative charge. So we can still do the crossover and reduce thing. And the ending of the nonmetal will be IDE. Going back to our first question, though, if that first element is a nonmetal, so no to the first question, then I'm doing something different. And because nonmetal, nonmetal compounds don't have charges, I don't really have a way to easily predict what the formula is likely to be. So I usually end up needing either the formula or the name. Um, if I were like predicting products on a chemical reaction, for example, I'd have a hard harder time predicting what the formulas would be. But these formulas are actually fairly easy because I'm using prefixes, and the prefixes is a count. It is how many there are. Now there were a couple of things about when do I say this and when do I not say that, and can I modify one of those things, but I'm not really too worried about that right now. You can go back and review that if you're struggling. Key things with the nonmetal nonmetal compound is we don't do a crossover and we don't reduce. The reason we don't do a crossover is because there's no charges, no positive, no negative, so I don't have to worry about matching those two things up. The reason I don't reduce is the way the uh, large aggregate of those compounds or those, uh, those atoms exist. Do they exist as true molecules or not? And I still end in the uh, end the name with IDE. Okay. 
So that is the nomenclature that we've done up to this point. There are other systems of nomenclature, and we're not going to get into it. We have no time or any real desire, but I do want to at least uh, introduce you to a couple of compounds from those systems. One of those compounds is called methane, CH4. Proper name for CH4 is methane. Methane, proper formula for that is CH4. There is nothing about the name that tells you the formula, and there's nothing about the formula that gives you any kind of clue as to the name. This is just one of those words or those things that you have to stick to memory that when you see CH4, the proper name is methane. When you see methane, the proper formula is CH4. Most compounds that we have give us two names, and each name tells us something about one of the elements in it, uh, not so much here. The other one, which has the same problem, same pattern, is ammonia. One nitrogen, three hydrogens, NH3. Proper name for ammonia, sorry, proper name for NH3 is ammonia. Proper and only acceptable formula for ammonia is NH3. That's the deal with those things. Those are the only acceptable names. We don't use prefixes, we don't use something else, we don't use, I don't even want to say it, but we don't use the thing that you would have otherwise done had you not seen this. Now, I said common names, so to make sure the video got a little bit longer than it should have needed to be, uh, I want to give you these. Now, you don't need to ever use these. These are completely optional. Um, you know, if you were ever curious as to what laughing gas was, it's that. But if you want to call laughing gas dinitrogen monoxide, perfectly acceptable. If you want to call it nitrous oxide, also acceptable. If you want to remember that quicklime is calcium oxide, CaO, okay, um, but not necessary. And the last one is actually uh, one step ahead of us two steps ahead of us if we think about the nomenclature schedule that, that we're going to keep uh, because it involves more than two kinds of atoms. So by the time we get to that, you'll probably have forgotten. But I do want you to kind of have a handle on the or an understanding that common chemicals in your life, like quicklime, use that all the time, but common chemicals in your life are chemicals and they have other names. And when we're doing nomenclature, some of the things that we've done nomenclature for are things that you have handled in a different context. However, all we really wanted to do was make sure we got methane and ammonia. Those are the key ones to take away from today. Um, and then if you can, if you're getting stuck on when do you use Roman numerals, when do you not use Roman numerals, when do you use prefixes, that flow chart. I would almost actually encourage you to go back and, and copy that out or screenshot or something so you have a way to go about you know, when you get a compound, what do you do with it? Anyway, that's it for today. Hopefully we met our shorter video target. Probably not, but what do you do? Talk to you another time.